Our guest today is Alice Schroeder, who wrote the best-selling book, The Snowball, on Warren Buffett. Alice, what, was your, what surprised you the most after spending 15 months or 18 months with Warren? Well, you know, on television, he has this awe-inspiring image. He's this grandfatherly guy who's all-knowing. And when you get to know him, he's first of all, he's, he's quite vulnerable. He's always got people around protecting him from confrontation. And he's almost like a kid. You know, he wants everybody to be his parent. And the other thing is, he's, he's incredibly tough. He does not like for people to realize how tough he is, and even ruthless, because, you know, if he's buying everything at a bargain, somebody's not making out on the other side. But that kind of contradicts the grandfatherly image. So, so what does that mean he wants everyone to be his parent? I, I mean, actually, certainly from the outside, you feel like his whole code is personal responsibility. My managers just do the right thing always. I do the right thing always. So what do you mean yeah. by that? Well, ethically, I think he's extremely responsible. And he's very clear on what he takes responsibility for. But he's he's you know he had a crummy childhood, and I cover it in the book, really ghastly. And so when it comes to being shielded from people being angry at him, for example, he can't handle any kind of, of, of volatility or people blowing up their temper. And so he's, he's got what I call the Praetorian Guard around him, and it's women, you know, who protect him from this. And what was that childhood in a snapshot? Yeah, he had an emotionally abusive mother who used to scream at him and his sister that they were worthless, they did not deserve to be alive, they should be ashamed to exist. And he said that by the time he was three years old, he was broken and it could not be put back together. Well, he certainly yeah. found a way to compensate for the worthless part. I mean, given one the, could say yeah. that, yes. I, I mean, but I, it's interesting because his personality is so the opposite of that. I mean, it just is so grounded and everything else. Is he always as charming as he is on TV? And uh, the, the charm is part of his personality. There's times when you want to strangle the guy, and yet he's charmingly irritating. So it's just, yeah, he is very witty, very charming, very funny. It's extraordinary. <laughs> now, you had a falling out with him after the book came out. What was that? Well, you know, he, I had editorial control over the book. That was the deal. And he cooperated with me throughout. I told him that you know there were parts of it he wasn't going to like, and he read it, and, and that was okay. But then after it was published, he stopped speaking to me. Uh, and there's parts of it that are not flattering to him. I portray his toughness. I detail the reasons why his marriage fell apart. Uh, and I think that that's natural. That'd be, it's very uncomfortable for him. Uh, on the other hand, I walked into this situation. I didn't know all these things, and I had to write the book. And uh, so, you know, I, I had to tell the truth. That's your job when you're a journalist. And if he read it beforehand, what was it? Was it when other people got it and suddenly started, it was the, the when myth other was shattered a little bit? I believe he, so, yeah. yeah. And he it's interesting that me. he didn't see that coming. Because, uh, of course, you, uh, obviously, if you're opening up, you have to tell that story. And especially if he reads it, and that's me, suddenly. You, you know, he, he, he spent five years talking to me. He laid himself out there. He, you know, knew that I knew all these things. And so I don't understand why it would be a surprise. Um, but, you know, I think the reality of it hit him in the face. It's been, you know, it's been really awkward. It's not fun to have Warren Buffett angry at you, believe me. And is he still angry? Oh, yeah. He is? Oh, yeah. And so what's that like? I mean, do you feel like you stabbed him in the back? No. No. I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I wrote a truthful book. He wanted to reconcile his public and private selves. That's what he said. And I believe this book is very fair, and I think it will serve uh, the reader and him well over time. I'm really proud of this book. Uh, so, you know. And, and also, I mean, the horrible things or the myth shattering things are so he's tough. Okay. That's not the worst thing in the world. And so yeah. he's not the guy, only guy whose marriage failed as a result of work. And so, I mean, these are horrible, these are hardly horrible revelations that have I, come out of this. So you, hopefully he'll get over it. I, would I think. you know, even if he doesn't, I did the right thing. And that's what matters. That's what's important. Um, you know, it isn't fun to have Warren Buffett mad at you, but, you know, I, it would be less fun to write a book that was just, you know, a giant valentine to him and then have to live with that the rest of my life. Right. So a couple more things on Warren. I, does, is there anything that he buys that resembles <laughs> conspicuous consumption? You know, he's got $38 billion or whatever it is. Does he buy anything other than Coke? Airplanes. He buys airplanes but, but, or he flies well, NetJets? He flies NetJets, but he owns, you know, he owns NetJets and, or through Berkshire, and he likes to travel in style. But what he really buys is companies, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, where other people might collect cars or they might, you know, collect yachts. He collects businesses. That's his collection, and he admires them. He calls it a museum. It's true. But is there nothing? I mean, he doesn't have a big house somewhere or... 
anything else, nice car, he's 47 not, Ferraris. He doesn't care. And in fact, he's not visual at all. His house has probably not been renovated in 40 years. And he doesn't see things. I, one time on the phone, I said, you know, Warren, what color is my hair? Because I just thought I'll give him a little test. And there was this long silence. And then he said, not black. You know, because wow. he just doesn't, he's not aware of his surroundings. He doesn't care. Last question, and much less relevant. Is he a good bridge player? He's an excellent bridge player. He plays with Sharon Osbourne, who's a two-time world champion, and they're quite good. Great. Thank you, Alice.